الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذي أصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فسعوا إلى ذكر الله وذروا البيع ذلك خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون We begin with Allah's blessed name We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified And we pray for peace and blessings on all His messengers and in particular on the last of them all, the Blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as we wish you with assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh on this, the day of Jum'ah in this town of Orgiva in Spain. And uh, we remind ourselves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us, commanded us, that when the call for Salatul Jum'ah is made on the day of Jum'ah, we must hasten to the zikr of Allah. And the zikr of Allah means to recognize Allah as Al-Akbar. That's the first step of zikr. The first, the very first step of zikr is to recognize Allah as Al-Akbar. He is supreme, Al-Akbar. And so when we come to the house of Allah on the day of Jummah, we come first of all to recognize Allah as Al-Akbar. But we are being tested and it is our obligation to recognize the test when it comes and to respond to the test in an appropriate way so we don't fail the test. Allah's Messenger told us that when we stand for prayer, we must stand shoulder to shoulder and not leave any space between us in the line. He said that if you leave any space, the shaitan will come to take that space. And all of us around the world of Islam know that this is so. Everybody knows that. That if you leave any space in between, the shaitan will come to take that space. And so for 1400 years, this Ummah has faithfully followed or tried to follow this command of the Prophet, Allah's blessing be upon him. And Allah commands us to obey the Prophet, obey him. So we will stand up in straight lows, straight rows, and we will try not to leave any space between us. Sometimes there might be a little space. But then came something called COVID about three years ago. And we recognize that this is not a virus which has come from nature. Because Allah will not send a virus which will attack all of mankind at the same time. Our Prophet, Allah's blessing be upon him, said that if you are in a place where a plague is taking place, they didn't use the word virus at that time, they used the word plague. He said, if you are there, do not leave it. And if you are outside, do not enter it. In other words, so far as our Prophet is concerned, it is not possible that all of mankind will all be at the same time 
enveloped by, by plague. So we recognize that this did not come from nature. This came from a laboratory. And if it came from a laboratory, it is biological warfare. This is what we said three years ago. And if it is biological warfare, then the vaccine cannot be innocent. So we did not take any vaccine. If the sheep and the cattle and the goats and the camels felt the need to take a vaccine, that is their choice. But if our choice is not to take a vaccine because we recognize it cannot be innocent because it is in response to biological warfare, then that is our right. But that was not all. <laughs> it was not just biological warfare and a vaccine which is not innocent. It was more than that. Three years ago, every government around the world had to submit to the World Health Organization. And the World Health Organization had already planned in advance of the, vaccine, of the virus coming, everything was already planned. They knew that the vi virus was coming and they planned in advance. And they, they brought something called social distances. This chutbah is being delivered in Orgiva in Spain. But this chutbah will reach far and wide when it is put on the internet. In Pakistan, they will listen to it. In Indonesia, they will listen to it. And they will know that everywhere in the world, social distances were, were imposed upon people. And that included the masjid. Not just the church and the mandir and the synagogue, but the masjid. And therefore, we had a choice. Shall we obey Allah and his messenger and stand shoulder to shoulder with no space in between as commanded by our prophet? Or shall we obey the governments which prohibit us from standing like that? Who made haram what Allah had made halal and stand three feet apart in Salat. This Khatib never did that in his life. Never. And when we, when we saw people standing like that in Salat and the Imam is leading the Salat, we realize that these are brothers who were tested and who failed the test. And if you fail the test this time, you can fail the test again and again to come. But that was not all. At no time did our Prophet, Allah's blessing be upon him, impose upon us the obligation of putting on a face mask in order to be able to enter the masjid. Never. If someone wants to cover their face and you're a man and you want to be in niqab like a woman, that's your choice. <laughs> that's your choice. But Allah's Messenger <coughs> never made it a condition to enter the masjid, a condition to perform the salat. And so this khatib never submitted to that and put on a face mask in the masjid. Never did it. But around the world, this Kati was in France, and as he entered the masjid in France, they handed me a face mask. 
I put it in my pocket and I went inside the machine. And when everybody stood up for Salat, and I, this Khadib saw people standing three feet apart <coughs> in Salat al Jumu'ah, this Khadib did not make a niya for performing Salat al Jumu'ah. No! This Khadib chose to make a niya for performing Salat al Zuhr and he performed Salat al Zuhr by himself and he allowed all the sheep and cattle and goats and camels to perform their bogus Salat. The language of this khutbah is harsh. The language of this khutbah with hurt and pain. Those who followed, followed like sheep and cattle, all of them who stood up three feet apart without thinking and who put on the face mask without thinking. But for those who recognized that they were misguided and who made tawbah to Allah for what they did and who have committed themselves not to repeat it when COVID comes back because COVID came from Dajjal and Dajjal's footprints are always in three parts. Ba'adawuzu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim in tadiku ila zillin zi salasi shu'am. The jazz footprints are always in three parts. So COVID come and then COVID one and COVID two and COVID three. So we know it's coming back. So may Allah bless those who made Toba and who commit themselves not to return to that part. To put on a face mask to enter the masjid and to perform your prayer. And the law requires you to stand three feet apart. And the law says only eight people can enter the masjid. Only eight. Well, then you have to change the azan. You, have, you cannot say any more hayya salat. You have to say come to salat, but only eight can come. That is the azan no must change. That's the first thing. <coughs> Nonsense. What we should have done at that time was to say, if we disobey the law and we stand up for Salat with no spaces, shape shoulder to shoulder, then they will come and arrest us and charge us and we'll have to go and pay a fine, $50,000 perhaps. And we don't have that money. But instead of obeying the law and disobeying Allah, we should have suspended Salatul Jum'ah. We should have suspended Salatul Jum'ah. Let me repeat it one more time. We should have suspended Salatul Jum'ah because Salatul Jum'ah becomes obligatory only when you have the freedom to pray to Allah as al -Akbar. When that freedom does not exist, Salatul Juma does not exist. So when COVID comes back, this is what we should do. And we pray that Allah may guide us, that we may be different from those who cannot think. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'na wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim إِنَّهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَ جَوَاجٌ كَرِيمٌ كَرِيمٌ مَلِكٌ بَرُّ الرَّعُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ وَرَقُوا الْحَرِيمُ نحمله ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك ربنا وتعاليك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم أرني الحق أرني الحق وحقا وزكنا التباع 
وأين الباطل باطلا وزكنا اجتنابا اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فعفوا يا كريم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي الكربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبر يعيزكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر أكبر السلام